Hi, and welcome to the Grove Podcast. I'm Matt Batty Alley, your host. In these episodes, we try and bring you companies and people and discussions that we at Mangrove Investor feel are important. These are the parts of the business world that maybe you don't see every day. So we try and highlight nonprofits, private companies, and even some public companies and show you the good that they're doing. So sit back and enjoy this episode. And thanks very much for listening. Hi, I'm Matt Batty Alley from Mangrove Investor. Hey, make sure you click the like button on this video and subscribe to our channel to keep getting these great stories about investing with a sustainability twist. Today, I want to talk to you about when to sell a stock. It's one of the most frequent reader questions that I've gotten over the past decade. And in this age of hodlers, it's even more important because you don't want to get stuck clutching a bad investment. We want to maximize our opportunity for gain, but balance that out with minimizing our risk. That's why we don't go with our gut and we sure don't hodl to the bottom. <laughs> we use math. It's called a trailing stop and it works like a safety line for rock climbing. It gives us rope as we climb higher, but if we fall, the stop kicks in and keeps us from losing everything. Rock climbers use a rope. We use a simple formula that tracks our positions and lets us know when to sell. All we do is figure out how much risk we want to take, how far we're willing to fall. For large stocks, 25% is generally good, although the more volatile stocks will get a 35% stop. That means if we buy a stock for $100 per share and we use a 25% stop, we'd sell it if it fell to $75. We'd leave the position with 75% of our capital still intact. That's important because if we lose 25% of our capital, we only need a 33% gain to recover it. If we lost 50% of our capital, we need a 100% gain to cover it. It might not feel good to sell something you believe in, but as we've seen recently, believing in something doesn't make it go up. We can't fight the trend. When the whole market is falling, walking away with 75% of your money is miles better than walking away with nothing. One lesson many investors learn the hard way, and we'd like to save you from this, is that hope isn't a valid strategy. Your gut feelings will get us in huge trouble. And when your portfolio goes red, it's time to dump your emotions and just use math. That's why we always use stops. It takes the emotions out and protects us when we need it most. And it gets even better. As an investment rises, our stop rises too. Here's an example. Let's say you bought the dip in Apple last June. You paid $125 per share in June 2021 and then watched as Apple shares soared to $189. Now at that point, your position is up 51%. However, since then, the share price collapsed and by June 16th, an Apple share traded for just $133. Now your position is up just 6%. However, a 25% trailing stop would have told you to sell on May 18th when the stock closed at $140.82. At that point, you still had an 11% gain. A trailing stop gives us a logical exit to a position. And in the case of Apple, we can take our cash out now and wait for the bear market to end before we get back in. Crashes happen, and when they do, everything falls. It doesn't matter how much work and research we do, there are always risks that can cause the stock to fall. We're seeing it in real time today, and there are plenty of examples from history. On March 11, 2011, a tsunami hit the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear reactor in Japan. The catastrophic wall of water caused the nuclear reactor to fail, and the resulting meltdown was the worst nuclear disaster in modern history. It also affected the stock market, specifically uranium miners. One producer, Cameco, had been on a 118% run in that summer of 2010. Shares rose from $20 to $43.50 by February 2011. Then the Fukushima disaster occurred and shares collapsed. Cameco's share price was $37.46 on March 10, 2011, and it fell to $28.10 by March 17, 2011. By November 2011, the price had fallen below $17 per share, and investors who held on lost over 60% from the top. More importantly, they didn't just lose their profits. Even if they bought shares at the bottom in 2010, they still lost 15% of their original capital in just a year. 
Now those investors turn a 118% profit into a loss because of a natural disaster through no fault of their own. Shares of Cameco continued to fall. And in November 2016, the stock bottomed at $7.46 a share. Today, shares, shares have recovered, uh, but they're still well below their 2011 highs. Investors who held this long have still lost money from the low in 2010. In summary, holding Cameco shares since 2010 is a seven-year investment that lost half its value, and that's a terrible result. Trailing stops would have prevented the loss and likely turned it into a modest gain. That's why we use them. They protect us from making stupid emotional mistakes. Let me show you a more recent example. If you had the guts to buy Precious Metals Explorer Core Mining in early 2020, just as the pandemic hit, you would have made out well. From spring 2020 to early 2021, the company's shares soared from $2.56 to $10.73. Bottom to top, that's a 319% gain. Investors could have easily quadrupled their money in core, but if you didn't know when to sell, you were on a round trip. That's what HODL got you. Shares of core mining went from hated to loved to hated again in just two years. It turned a 319% gain into a 52% gain. It went from around $10 at the top to $3 today. But if you'd had a trailing stop, you'd have sold when it fell 25% from the top at around $8. You see how we preserved your gains? Our goal as investors are simple. Preserve our capital, avoid big losses, take outsized profits when the opportunities arise. And if you know when and why to sell, you can meet all of those goals. I recommend using a simple system to know when to sell. And if you want to learn more about trailing stops, this essay is a must read. I'll put the link in the, in the notes below. Thanks again for watching. I'm Matt Batty Alley from Mangrove Investor. Well, look at that. You made it to the end. Thanks very much for listening. I hope you enjoyed the podcast uh, and we're going to have a lot more coming. You need to sign up and become part of the Grove. Give us your email address and we'll make sure you're notified anytime there's a new podcast coming down the pike. Have a great day.